It's Applesauce Day, one of my absolute favorite days each fall. It's a beautiful October day here in Pennsylvania, and we've invited some great friends over today. We're going to work together to make applesauce outside, under the sun. We have a lot of work ahead of us, but we know it's going to be a lot of fun. Just need to give our apples a little bit of a bath. This is a bathtub we keep in our greenhouse. A little water and vinegar, we'll give them a wash, and we'll get them up to the house to get started. So glad that you can join us today. We've been making applesauce uh, at home for about 20 years, and our original recipe was a mix of a keepsake, a Braeburn, and a John of Gold apple. We bring each of those apples into the recipe for a variety of reasons. We want things that are tart, we want things that are sweet, we want a depth of flavor. I don't want to have something that is just one note, so we make a blend. I couldn't get the Braeburns this year, so we substituted, and I couldn't get keepsakes, so we substituted, and I want to walk you through what it is we've chosen to get. I'm gonna start with the Honeycrisp apple. The Honeycrisp is a hybrid of a keepsake. It's a keepsake and another hybrid together. So I'm getting the same crisp, sweet, tart flavor that I like. It's a relatively firm apple, has a nice crisp crunch when you bite into it, and it cooks down very nicely, but holds its structure so it doesn't just become total mush. So this is a Honeycrisp. I'm gonna take a bite and see what it tastes like. It's good. It's a firm apple. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit tart. I think I've had some that have more tartness, which is kind of what I like best. Um, the second apple that we chose this year, because the local orchard had it, is a Cortland. And the Cortland apple is a mix of a Macintosh and a Ben Davis, which is also from the Macintosh family. So it's very similar in flavor to the Braeburn that we used to use. This is a juicier apple, sweet, and a little softer than the Honeycrisp. So I have a Cortland apple here. And you can see that it has a white flesh inside. And it's definitely a sweeter apple and it's also pretty soft compared to the other ones. And then the third apple that we chose this year is the Jonna Gold, which is a nice mix of a Jonathan apple and a Golden Delicious. This gives you a lot of flavor. It's a nice uh, sweet and firm apple, but it's a little sour. So that, nice, that adds a nice variety of flavor into the mix. Wait for my ass to catch on fire. <laughs> Whoa! Ah! Then it'll get exciting. Okay, what we have here is a uh, Jonagold, and um, I guess this is a cross between a Jonathan and a Golden Delicious. Uh, my go to apple uh, was the Jonagold before I really discovered the Honeycrisp, but let's see. I like this one because Honeycrisp can be really tart and I like that part but this is also a little mellower version of the Honeycrisp and it's got that cross between the two so um, this is a great um, standby if you can't get Honeycrisp. To make our applesauce we're actually just going to put all of our apples together in the largest pots we have. We work outside to do this because it makes a sticky mess on the floor and I'm just going to quarter them and dump them right into the pot. I want a nice mix of each variety in each batch so I'm going to make sure that I get a blend in every pot. We'll cook it on our outdoor grill stove. And when they're soft, I'm gonna go ahead and start grinding them down. And the grinder will separate out the seeds and the skin. So I'm not too concerned about stems, skins, seeds, any of that. So we'll get that later. They will become soft at different times. The softer apples will be ready first. So they'll cook down a little bit more than the crisp apples. This is a softer apple than the one I just cut. So I'm just gonna keep a nice mix in here. You'll get good color with this. And really, if you use the right blend of apples, you can use any blend you want. But if you use the right blend of apples, you're gonna get the flavor and the sweetness without having to add any sugar. And that's the most important part to me. Our applesauce is just apples. I love the flavor of some of these old variety apples, and I try to avoid things like the Granny Smiths and Red Delicious, which in my opinion are anything but delicious. You're gonna get a lot more flavor and a lot more texture, and it's worth it. My applesauce costs a little bit more because we're going to orchards to buy really good variety apples. It is worth it in the end. If you think that you wanna add anything to your applesauce, I recommend doing it after you're finished canning it. We're gonna cook these down and grind this into applesauce. I don't add cinnamon, I don't add sugar, I don't put anything in it. But if you decide you want a little cinnamon on top, do it when you open the jar and eat it out of the bowl. But that way I have fresh applesauce that I can add to recipes for baking, I can use it for cooking, and it's just straight up apples. 
One of the really great parts about making applesauce the way we do it is that because I leave the skins on it, you're going to extract a lot of the good nutrients, and the nutrients exist on the outside near the skin. In doing so, as we grind it, you will see a little bit of this red blush color show up in the applesauce, so our applesauce won't come out yellow, more of a golden red, and it's absolutely beautiful. Let's get these cooking, and I'll show you how it looks. Okay, so I've put about six, maybe eight cups of water in the bottom of the pot. It's a lot of apples in here, and I want to make sure they don't burn. I have them on direct heat out here. This is our camping stove. I have them on direct heat out here, and they will burn on the bottom. Eventually, as that water starts to cook the apples down, they'll release their own juices as well. But to give it a little bit of a head start with some water is a good idea. All right, are they softening up? Yes, they are. Oh, they look good. Yeah, they smell great. It does smell pretty delicious out here. The bees like it too, so we're a little challenged with the bees, which is just part of applesauce making, but they are breaking down really nicely. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about this spoon that you've created here, Papa. Ah, uh, this spoon is an old broken mall handle. Mm. It uh, just now got sanded and repurposed and is lovely because it's a piece of hickory, stout enough to stir even the biggest pots. <laughs> just the thing we need today. Correct mundo. Get out of here, B. See, now we got a little bit of heat coming up. Yeah. And a little bit of sauce. So the goal just is to have bit. just enough water that we can get them boiling and draw out the juices in the apples, but not to water it down. Right. So we're actually going to ladle these out of here and leave the water that's in it for the next batch. All right, we decided to try a couple of different ideas oh, today, and we finally decided okay. on using the original okay. applesauce maker that I've always used for 20 years or more to make applesauce. Um, I wanted to try and see if we could use our old juicer, which we used in my tomato sauce episode, because it's automated and I thought it would be a little faster. Um, unfortunately, it just didn't really work very well, and this is going really smooth. This is a very, very simple device that you can purchase for, I think, under $50. And it does require some hand cranking, but the apples are cooked so soft that they're really going through very quickly. You can see the different colors that are coming out here from the skins, and that's why I leave the skins in. We get this beautiful color and flavor. It's not just about the color. And it's a little chunky. And it makes it a little chunkier. Which I prefer. Oh, the leavings that are coming out the end of the bowl here are pretty dry, but I will run them through a second time just to make sure that we're getting every bit of juice and flavor and sauce out of it that we can separate out all of those stems and seeds and skins onto my table, which is clearly where I want it to go. Because one with me. Okay. All right, we've made a lot of applesauce outside, and we are so excited to be inside away from the bees because they are starting to really attack us. They smell it, and they just come in from miles around. So we're going to work on canning inside while the boys continue making more applesauce outside. This is my friend Chris. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, Chris and her family are here today because they want to make applesauce too, but haven't done it together. So we figured we'll just get a lot of apples at once, make it all together. And her canning equipment and my canning equipment are both here today so we can process a lot at once. If you've watched my other canning videos, you know the process. I always have my lids and rings in hot water ready to go. I've had my jars in the oven um, to sterilize. We wash them and then we put them in the oven, 250 degrees for at least 15 minutes should get them sterile. And all of our other tools are stale and ready to go, so we're just gonna go ahead and start ladling sauce in, put it into our canner. This is water bath canning today, so if you reference that book that I always talk about, the USDA book, uh, to tell you about timing, and I'll pull those details up and share them with you too. Let's get started. First, let's taste it. Oh, let's taste it. Can you want to taste? Okay. It's your first time. Okay. Tell me what you think. All right. It's so good. It's tart. It's sweet without any sugar. Yeah. And the thickness is amazing. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. That you can really make something this delicious without sugar. I want to dip again, but I won't because right. we have it sterile, so we won't <laughs> do it again. <laughs> and the color is beautiful. <laughs> it looks gorgeous. Wow. Damn, it's so good. Wait, what? It's, it's so good. Right here. So, so why on earth are we canning all of this applesauce? Well, I used to can all this applesauce when I had lots of little ones at home, and I fed them applesauce three meals a day, it seemed. But now, even though my kids are grown, they still love it. So we don't always just eat it, though, by the bowl. 
So I use applesauce in a lot of my baking. I use it as a substitute in baking when I want sweetness, but I don't want to add a lot of sugar. What else do you do with it? You eat it with your oatmeal. I eat it with my oatmeal. Mm -hmm. I love it over pork. Oh yeah, I have a great recipe where we, those sweet and saucy pork chops that we make that have applesauce in it, it's so good. All right, I think we need to start cleaning off these jars and start processing. I agree. <laughs> okay. All right, if you've watched my canning videos before, you know this stage is all about trying not to burn your fingers while making sure the tops of the jars are clean. It is really critical to take the time to do this. This makes sure that you get a really good seal when we put our lids and rings on. Can't decide which one you've already got that one. <laughs> Could you get mold on these if you didn't clean them? Yeah, so if this doesn't seal properly, the lid is not going to make a clear seal. That red ring these are really hot. This red ring on the inside of this lid is softened because we put it in the hot water. And if we didn't seal this, if we didn't get a good seal by cleaning this, we wouldn't be able to lock that down. And by not being able to lock it down, mold could grow underneath. And then you'll lose the whole jar, which is really sad. So take the time to clean them up. I put them in as a set with the lid and the ring in the pot together because I just think it makes it so much easier to put them on. Pop these on here, and then once they're on, I go ahead and get my pot holders out to tighten them up. Come here, you go there. And your rings you reuse, but the lids you don't because sure. something about the seal? Yeah, so um, the only thing I ever reuse a lid for is if I want to use it for a dry jar, but I can't use it for canning again. It's a one-time use. Some people try to do that. I don't think it's worth the risk to invest the money and time into doing your canning and then risk losing it because you tried to reuse a lid. So the rings can be reused. People call them bands or rings. They can be reused until they're just rusty and they're just not looking good anymore. But the lids themselves you only use one time. Unless you want to do something like storing dried beans in a jar, then it's fine to go ahead and use them. But not again for canning. So we're making these hand tight. You don't want to over tighten them. You just want them to be hand tight. And you did these? Yep. And then we can go ahead and put them in the canner and we'll start processing some more jars. jars here because that's what fits on a tray in the oven to um, to get them hot to sterilize them so I grabbed two more out of the oven so we have a complete set of 14 I have both canners going so we can drop 14 jars in here at a time and get them processed so while Chris adds two more I'm gonna start loading these and it really helps if you have a second canner and you can do a lot at once it also really helps that we're doing all the applesauce making outside so your stove isn't overburdened it just means that you're going to have a few more bees joining the party. Okay, back to my canning Bible. This is the book. Remember, mine's 20 years old, so this uh, USDA canning book that I have is going to look a little different if you buy the new version, which I'll drop into the description um, of the video. But I'm going to the section on fruit and fruit products, and the first item that we see is applesauce. I want to talk a little bit about planning, uh, which is really important. How many pounds create how many quarts and so forth and we were decided to put together we bought six bushels of apples so each of our families will have we think somewhere around 40 to 50 jars it just depends upon um, the size of the apples and how they cook down but um, we are looking at a canning time for quarts and where we live of 20 minutes that's once they come back up to a boil I'm going to turn it so they're not over boiling but we're going to keep it at a rapid boil for 20 minutes so the timer starts when I see these boiling again uh, for 20 minutes. If your altitude is different, the book adjusts for that and will give you the information. So we're just going to wait for these to come up to a boil. I guess we'll go make some more applesauce. Sounds good. All right, under the category of if you can do a job well by hand, you could always do it better with a power tool. So when Chris and I were inside canning the applesauce, we found Joe and Andrew out here picking it up a notch. Improvising. That's right. Improvising. Adapting, <laughs> overcoming. If you take the hand crank off and put a drill on with the same size. Suddenly things go faster. <laughs> Going a little faster. So fast that we can't keep up inside. But he's really taking this very basic applesauce maker and speeding it up a little bit. 
As long as I got batteries. And when the battery runs out, it's time for the ported. ported. all of what's splashing around and making a mess in the patio. This is best cleaned up with a hose. So if you have the space to work outside, Or a pressure do washer. It. Or a pressure washer. And if you have the space to work outside, definitely do it. What do you say, Joe? Oh, wait. I want the, you, I want you're supposed paint. to dip away. Oh, right? yes, yes. Come on, let's use proper. Let me, let me get my... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. What do you think? Oh, that's delicious. Wow. Yeah. All right, our 20 minutes have passed, so I can go ahead and pull my jars out. When you do so, be careful. The water and the steam, pretty hot. I've already burnt myself once today. Give them a little bit of a tilt to get the water off the top of the jar and set them aside. I like to put them on a towel on top of my counter so they don't slide. And I leave the bands on for at least a day. I let them cool down until the next morning or the next day, whenever I have time to come get them off. You want to take the bands off. You don't want to put them away with the bands on because mold can form underneath of that ring. If any sugar escaped during the canning process. So just keep pulling these out. We're going to run out of room in this kitchen fast for all of these jars. We have to start getting creative about where we're going to put these. We're ready for another batch. What a great day that was. It's so much fun to do a canning day with friends. If you can get another family together that you enjoy canning with and share in the labor, it really makes it such a better day. We really had a lot of fun with great music and we shared some food together and we worked together and we both have an awesome reward. I think we did end up with about 50 jars each, 50 quarts each per family. And we've talked all day long about how we're gonna use it. And little things like this really make a big difference. It's really rewarding to be able to go to the basement and grab a jar of applesauce instead of having to run out to the store and get it. But it's great for the nostalgia, but it's also great for the value. And just to know that we have the ability to be able to prepare our own food and preserve our own food. Um, I also love the quality control that you get when you make your own because you can go to the orchard and buy fruit that you know how it was raised or raise your own and know that you're putting something on your plate that's really healthy and good for your family. Um, but I have to say the best part of this entire experience is sharing it together with my family and with our friends because it gives us the opportunity to spend some time together doing something that's a really rewarding project together. So thanks a lot for joining us today. I hope that you learned a lot. I hope we can encourage you to go ahead and give it a try as well.